Good morning, I'm Pastor Gordon Nauman of Trinity Lutheran Church in Scarsdale, New York. You can find us at trinityscarsdale.org. Today we're going to have a daily devotion from Portals of Prayer. Come meditate with me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. First of all, from Psalm 103, 15 to 22. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 to 25. As he passed by, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with a saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. I said that rather quickly. So he went and washed and came back seeing. He could see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, some said, I'm sorry, were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, no, but it looks like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how is it that your eyes were opened? He answered the man called Jesus, made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went, the name of the pool, and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? I don't know. I couldn't see him at the time, right? They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs, such wonders, such miracles? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, the man who was blind, What do you say about him, since he's opened your eyes? He said, He's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, 
until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age. He'll speak for himself. Perhaps they were more excited about the fact that their son who was born blind now sees, but were told that his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. At the time, the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, he was to be put out of the synagogue. They are equivalent of excommunication today. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know. Though I was blind, now I see. Which is profound on a few levels, if you think about it. Okay, from Portals of Prayer, emphasis on verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 29, which isn't any of our readings, but sometimes it does that. In that day, but it's a great prophecy, the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. Now we know why that verse was ascribed. Prescribed? Yeah. The theme is disabilities. One of life's toughest questions is this. Why are children born with disabilities? We hate to see suffering when it shows itself, especially in children. It really is distressing. Why should the weakest, most vulnerable among us have to face the toughest challenges? Right? They haven't done anything wrong yet from our worldly perspective. They haven't done anything that merits punishment. How could they have? They've just been born. But the truth is disabilities, accidents, and illnesses happen because we are all sinners living in a sinful world, and believe it or not, from conceivement. However much value we believers especially put on the, uh, you know, the value of life, from conceivement, just so you know, we also understand that we're all sinners. We might wish that these challenges would not happen, but the truth is that we are all deserving of the consequences of sin. This is true even for the baby born with a lifelong debilitating condition. In today's reading, the Pharisees attribute blindness to the sin of either the man or his parents. Jesus us teaches us a different purpose for this man's blindness, right? thank God, to show glory to him. Here it is the Pharisee who is truly disabled as well, because they can only see God's law, not his grace. Right, We would really be in desperate straits if this world were simply governed and provided for with the law. Right, That's not what we're saying as Christians. That's the whole point. But we understand this truth about the law. The Pharisees want to believe they can save themselves by obeying the law. They cannot see God's glory, right? Where do we say God's glory is? In the cross of Jesus. In what the Messiah must bear, has, pro has been prophesied that he must bear, right? Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. They only see their own need for glory. 
what we need to understand as believers is that God is there for us in health and in lack of and in lack of health. I wanted to say and in lack of faith, but he's there for us in health, in lack of health, in faith and in lack of faith or weakness of faith. He's still there for us, ready for when we believe. His glory, for God is glorious, is able to shine in every one of his children. That is in every situation, therefore, because any one of us could be his child, especially so if you are baptized in the name of Jesus. His grace is what gives us worth. Therefore, theoretically and potentially, everyone, right, has worth because God first and foremost died on the cross for everyone and rose from the dead to justify everyone and second, applies that grace to us for daily living, sanctifies us. It is God's will to heal us, to save us. That's our necessary emphasis then on Christians. There is the truth that we are sinners from birth, and this comes in many forms. It comes in the, uh, in the health of our, our being, and in the sickness of our being, the truth of the law. And then it comes in the grace of God, in knowing in every situation the means with which God is reaching out to help us, to heal us. With that, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes, our eyes of faith, so that we can see your grace before us to heal us, to comfort us in our time of distress, anxiety, sickness, and in health. In your name we pray. Amen. And the peace of God be with you the rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow.